I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast for the health of it. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. Today we're finishing up our series on the seven deadly sins of nutrition, and we're talking about artificial sweetener. Now, if you're just tuning in, you might be a new listener or a new viewer, and we talk about the seven deadly sins of nutrition. This is the core of what I teach when it comes to nutrition. Now, the seven deadly sins, I, call, I made this up. You're not going to find this anywhere else but here. The seven deadly sins are alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Now, if you're like most people, you're going to go, but Dr. Joe, that's my whole diet. That's all I ever eat is alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. And there's no way I'm going to ever survive if I, can, I can't eat the seven deadly sins. Here's my rules on the seven deadly sins. Cut back or cut out the seven deadly sins. Now, of all the things I'm going to teach you, the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, the worst one, the first one you need to get out of your diet, the worst one in your diet, is artificial sweetener. So this one should be at the top of your list. Now, artificial sweeteners are often a topic of heated debate. On one hand, they claim to increase your risk of cancer and harm your blood sugar and your gut health. On the other hand, uh, some authorities consider them t totally safe, and many people use them to reduce their sugar intake and to lose weight. So let's dive in. What are artificial sweeteners? First of all, artificial sweeteners or sugar substitutes are chemicals uh, added to some foods and beverage to make them taste sweet. Now, people often refer to them as intense sweeteners because they provide a taste similar to table sugar, but several thousand times sweeter. That's a problem right there. This level of sweetness doesn't occur in nature. So when something doesn't occur in nature, it worries me. Although some sweeteners contain calories, the amount needed to sweeten products is so small, you end up consuming essentially zero calories. So that's one thing they, they say is in their favor. Now, you're going to hear me talk about why I'm not a fan of artificial sweeteners, but one thing is that it has zero calories. That's deceptive, though. So how do artificial sweeteners work? What happens is the surface of your tongue is covered with many taste buds, each containing several taste receptors that detect different flavors. So when you eat them, the taste receptors encounter food molecules. The perfect fit between the receptor and the molecule sends a signal to your brain, allowing you to identify the taste. For example, a sugar molecule fits perfectly into your taste receptors for sweetness, allowing your brain to identify the sweet taste. Artificial sweetener molecules are similar enough to sugar molecules to fit in the sweetness receptors. However, they're generally too different from sugar for the body to break them down into calories. And so the theory is that you put them in your body, they don't get absorbed, and they're passed out. It's not always true. This is how they provide a sweet taste without adding calories. Only a minority of artificial sweeteners have a structure that your body can actually break down into calories. Given there are only a few small amounts of artificial sweeteners, a few molecules that are needed to sweeten, you consume virtually no calories. So common artificial sweeteners, let's talk about what some of the most common ones are on the market. Some of them you've never even heard of, which is kind of cool. I hope you never hear from them. Aspartame. Aspartame is 200 times sweeter than table sugar. We're going to cover that one a lot more in depth later on. Acylfame K, you might see it listed as ACE-K or acylfame potassium. K, by the way, is the symbol for potassium. Uh, it's 200 times sweeter than table sugar. Now, you can use that for cooking and baking. Adventame. This is a sweetener. 20,000 times sweeter than table sugar. It can be used for like baking and cooking. Don't recommend you do, by the way. Just saying it can be used. Uh, cyclamate, 50 times sweeter than sugar. It's used for cooking and baking. This has been banned in the United States since 1970. Hopefully you won't ever see that again. Neotame, this is a sweetener 13 time, 13,000 times sweeter than table sugar, used for cooking and baking. Neohesperidine, 340 times sweeter than table sugar and use it uh, and mixing with acidic foods. But note that it's not approved in the United States. So, so far, we're okay there. Uh, saccharin is 700 times sweeter than table sugar. Sucralose, 600 times sweeter than table sugar. Uh, it's suited for baking, uh, cooking, and mixing with acidic foods. So there's a bunch of different ones out there, all competing for your dollar. I don't want you to spend any dollars on them. I'm not a fan of the things I just listed. And each one, has issues that I'm concerned with. And the good news is, I'll kind of give you a little heads up here, there are 
Substitutes for sugar, things like stevia, lohan, uh, xylitol, we're going to cover this later on in the show, that are okay. So let's assume that there's no risk to any of the ones I just listed. I don't, I don't believe that. There's a lot of risks to all of them. But let's assume there's no risk to them. But there's some question about it. There's no question about stevia. There's no question about xylitol. There's no question about lohan. So if you're going to use an artificial sweetener, these aren't artificial, they're natural, you could use those. Now, they work the same way. The way they work is they get into the tongue, they look like sugar, stimulate the sweet uh, receptors on the tongue, and the brain says, ooh, that tastes sweet. But they don't have the side effects. And that's the, whenever I talk about healthcare, if you're new to the show, uh, I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, <clears throat> excuse me, retired dietitian, award-winning author, a radio and television show host. And my goal is always to get the most impact for your health with the least amount of side effects. That's why chiropractic care is ideal for people with pain. It's the most effective, least expensive, safest form of healthcare when it comes to pain, back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, headaches. So why wouldn't you do it? it drives me insane when patients go all the way to the umpteenth degree, sometimes they have surgery, sometimes they have injections. I'm not against surgery and injections if you need it. And then they come to me and say, well, that didn't work. And then my doctors work on them and say, oh my gosh, this is so much better, so much more effective, so much less expensive. Why didn't I do this first? So that's how I want you to think about uh, food as well. What's the most effective, least dramatically uh, risky food there is? And that's what we talk about the artificial sweeteners. There's a high risk involved. Uh, stevia, Lohan, uh, xylitol, those are all very low risk and very functional as well. So let's discuss artificial sweeteners being popular around people trying to lose weight. That's probably the number one reason uh, people would do that. The, their effect on appetite and weight vary among different studies. Some researchers say it's okay, some people say it's don't. Again, there's a potential risk. Research shows that artificial sweeteners might increase appetite and promote weight gain. Isn't that a kick in the head? You're trying to lose weight, you're using artificial sweeteners, but it causes you to gain weight. That's not fun. So the idea is that artificial sweeteners may be unable to activate something called the food reward pathway, which is needed to make you feel satisfied after eating. You eat, you feel full. Artificial sweeteners don't activate that pathway the way food does, and that's where you have your problems. So given that they taste sweet but lack calories that are found in sweet tasting foods, they're thought to confuse the brain into still feeling hungry. You use the artificial sweetener, eh, it was sweet, but I still want to eat. So additionally, some scientists think that you need to eat more of the artificially sweetened food to try to make you feel full and that's more than you would compare to sugar-sweetened versions. It's even been suggested that sweeteners may cause cravings for sugary foods. Ah! The whole reason you're doing the artificial sweetener is to get away from the sugar, and now it's, it can increase your cravings for sugary foods. So what about artificial sweeteners and diabetes? Again, I'm not a fan of using artificial sweetener if you're trying to lose weight. Not a good idea. Studies show it doesn't work. What about diabetics? Now, this, when it came out, it was a big product that was good for diabetics. Those with diabetes may benefit from choosing artificial sweeteners according to some studies. But again, you have stevia, you have lohan, you have xylitol, which are safe. If you're gonna, be a, if you're gonna do it for diabetes, again, I'd recommend you use those. So they often offer a sweet taste without accompanying the rise in blood sugar levels. Absolutely right. On the other hand, a lot of control studies show that artificial sweeteners do not affect blood sugar and insulin levels. And that can, be, that, that can be a good thing, but there are side effects. So what about artificial sweeteners in something called metabolic syndrome? Metabolic syndrome refers to a cluster of medical uh, conditions, including high blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess belly fat, abnormal cholesterol levels. How many people have that? Raise your hands. A lot of you do. I know that because I've been in practice for 36 years, and I see it almost every day. So these conditions, these metabolic syndrome, these conditions increase your risk of chronic disease, such as heart attack, stroke, uh, heart disease, type 2 diabetes. Some studies suggest that diet soda drinkers have up to 36% higher risk of metabolic syndrome. 36% increase. Wait a minute, you're doing it for one thing because you're diabetic, but it can increase your risk of other problems. Why use it? Doesn't make sense. So why do, how, how do artificial sweeteners affect your gut health? Now, if you've listened to my shows before, you know I'm really big on making sure your gut is healthy. The nervous system controls the digestive system, and the digestive system controls the nervous system. It's this back and forth control. And if you start messing with the digestive system, all sorts of problems happen. Right before I came on the air today, 
I got a call from my friend Frank, who I went to high school with, hadn't seen him since high school. And he said, hey man, I'm watching your shows, I'm watching your videos, I'm watching you on TV and radio. Uh, it's amazing what you've done getting people well. I'm so proud of you. What do you do about blood pressure? And so we started talking and he's thin and he has an active job. Uh, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't drink, but he still has high blood pressure. And I said, well, now we gotta start looking at what could be causing the high blood pressure. And one of the things we always look at is the digestive system. Because the same nerve that controls your digestive system controls your heart, it's called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve, it's being irritated because the digestive system is being irritated, it can cause the blood pressure to go up. And he said, well, I do have a lot of digestive problems. I said, all right, Frank, go to my website, drjoe.com, and just type in whatever you're looking for. In this case, just type in blood pressure into the search bar, hit enter, and you'll see radio shows we've done, TV shows that we've done, articles that we've written on whatever topic you're looking for. And chances are we have that topic on the website. We've covered a lot over the years. And he says, I'll listen to that. And I says, another supplement I recommend called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels and increases circulation, but it can help lower blood pressure. So the gut plays a role in so many different things. So if you're going to put something in your body that can mess with your gut health, that's a problem. Now, your gut bacteria play an important role in your health. And poor gut health is linked to so many other problems, uh, including weight gain. We talked about blood pressure, blood sugar, metabolic syndrome, weakened immune system, disrupted sleep. So if you have digestive issues, you might want to come see us so we can go ahead and get that fixed. Because if we can fix the digestive system, a lot of these other issues go away. Because in his case, he couldn't figure out where the blood pressure was coming from. And it probably was coming from his digestive system. So you may have these other issues. You've been to other doctors. You've taken medication. You've tried supplements. It's not working. Let's go look at the gut. Again, as a chiropractor, my team of doctors, we try to get to the cause of your problem and not just treat the symptoms. So the composition and the function of the gut bacteria vary by each one of us, by individuals, and it's, they're affected on what we eat. Now, including certain, uh, like things like artificial sweetener, one study showed the artificial sweetener saccharin disrupted gut bacteria balance in four out of seven healthy participants who were not used to consuming it. The four responders, and they call them responders in this study, also showed poor blood sugar control after as few as five days from consuming artificial sweetener. Why are you doing the artificial sweetener? Control the blood sugar. It messed up the blood sugar. Even more, when the gut bacteria from these people were transferred into mice, this is some things we do in science, the animals developed poor blood sugar control. They just took bacterial co components from their colon, put it in mice, and it affected the mice. So it was the bacteria that was doing it. That, we know that because the bacteria affected the mice. Now, let's move on to aspartame. That's my, the big one. Aspartame, headaches, depression, and seizures. Big stuff going on here. Some artificial sweeteners may cause unpleasant symptoms, such as headaches, depression, seizures. Now, in some individuals, not all. And that's where the problem comes in. Well, it didn't affect me. Yeah, but it affects other people. Some people are more sensitive than others. Now, these individuals, uh, the variability may also apply to aspartame's effect on depression. For instance, people with mood, mood disorders may be more likely to experience depressive symptoms in response to aspartame consumption. So the bottom line is this. Negative effects range from each individual, vary from each individual, and depend on the type of sweetener. Is it aspartame? Is it sucralose? Is it uh, acylfame K? But for all of my research, none of the results are good. And once again, we have options. If we didn't have options, I'd say, well, let's try to mitigate the damage. You don't have to mitigate the damage because we have options. Now, I want to talk about some bad news uh, for folks with brain issues and stroke. Artificially sweetened drinks increase your risk of stroke and dementia. Now, if you've ever dealt with senior population, I deal with them all day in my offices, uh, the senior population, their big concern is dementia. And even if they forget something, now, we all forget things sometimes. Walk in a room, what, I, what was I doing here? I don't remember. Uh, I was supposed to write that down, and I didn't. But when seniors get it, the first thing they think is, I'm getting dementia. Sometimes you're right. But now the studies are coming out, so many different things on dementia. We've done shows on this. You go to website, drjoe.com, put in mental health, and we talk about these things. But when they start having these symptoms, it becomes serious because now if they have this, they can't take care of themselves anymore. And if you talk to seniors, if they don't have family to take care of them, it's not a pleasant situation. If you've ever been to senior housing, some of them are awesome, unbelievable. It's like a cruise ship, and I want to go live there right now. Other ones, disgusting. And I've been in some, it just smells like human waste and urine, and it's, it, it, the, the floors are dirty, and they ring the bell trying to get help for somebody to help them go to the bathroom, help them get some food, help them change their bed sheets. Nobody responds. Folks, don't let yourself get to that point. 
That's what I'm getting at. If you get to that point and you're there, everyone I've ever spoken to say, I wish I'd taken better care of myself. Had I known that this was going to be the final days of my life or the final years of my life, I would have never eaten bad food. I would have never not gotten treatment after my car accident. I would have never suffered with neck pain and back pain when we know chiropractic is the number one most effective, least expensive treatment for these things. So they have regrets, and I don't want you having regrets. So if you're doing artificial sweetener, there's even another reason to avoid this artificial sweetener at all costs. Artificial sweetened drinks increase the risk of stroke and dementia. So in other words, it's, hampering, it's hammering your brain. It's messing with your brain. Researchers at Boston University crunched the numbers, and they found that people who diet soda, who ate, drank diet soda, are nearly three times more likely to experience stroke and dementia. Now, it looks like there's not very much on the upside of having sugary drinks. And of course, if you substitute the sugary drinks for artificial sweetener, that doesn't help. So we did a show on soda already. You can go to our website, drjoe.com, listen to the whole show on soda and sugary drinks. Now we're talking about artificial sweetener, not a good substitution. Now, the good news is if you like soda, there are things that are stevia sweetened, Lohan sweetened, sodas. And so if you like soda, it's out there. You can drink those. Now, don't drink too much of them. Of course, if you do, do too much xylitol, it might give you diarrhea, but there are options, and that's the good news. And they have zero calories, too, if you're worried about the calories, and they don't cause you to gain weight, like some of the studies show with artificial sweetener. So maybe some good old-fashioned water might be something you need to get used to, and you can do water with stevia, you can do water with lemon juice, you can do teas, herbal teas. I drink herbal tea all day, every day, especially in the winter. I've got two big containers, I fill them up in the morning, and I drink most of them by the end of the day. So you can do herbal teas. I speak a lot. So I use a, a, a tea called Slippery Elm. And Slippery Elm helps soothe my voice and helps the digestive system, the digestive tract. You might like peppermint. It helps calm you down. helps with digestion. Uh, you might want something that's relaxing. You might want uh, like chamomile. You might want something that's stimulating. Herbal teas are a great choice if you don't want to drink just plain water. So there are also investigations of the impacts of drinking regular soda. Uh, and we've covered that all in old shows. I say old shows, previous shows. And now sugar-sweetened beverage are not associated with stroke and dementia. They are associated with other problems. This type of soda comes with its own set of problems. If you're drinking the sugary ones, you can listen to that on, on, on website, drjoe.com. So let's talk about some other conditions linked to diet soda. And this is what I want you to get, is that the artificial, when I say soda, anything with artificial sweetener in it, there's over 6,000 products with artificial sweetener. Boston University showed the first connection between diet soda and dementia, but there's a long list of medical researchers linking artificial sweetener to a slew of other health problems, including depression. Drinking four cans a day increase your risk of depression by 30%. Kidney damage. Long-term diet soda drinkers are linked to up to a 30% reduction in kidney function. Type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Drinking diet soda daily increases your risk of metabolic syndrome by 36%. Remember metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, belly fat. It increases your risk of type 2 diabetes by 67% compared to non-diet soda drinkers. Now, this is a study out of Boston University. Why drink something that shortens your life? Do this instead. We talked about tea. Tea for Alzheimer's uh, can lower your risk of Alzheimer's by up to 86%. Why? High antioxidants. It does have caffeine. I'm not a fan of caffeine, but caffeine can increase the circulation to your brain. I take Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support for circulatory uh, enhancement because it helps uh, circulation to the brain, to the reproductive organs, to your arms, your legs. It gives you a ton of energy. I was talking to my producer, Sierra, um, and I, I, always say take, I always take my Dr. Joe's nitric oxide in the morning. And she's a little, she's about half my size. And she usually takes two. She took four one day. She goes, man, I was buzzing. I was off the chart buzzing. So yeah, I, the nitric oxide gives you a burst of energy, but it doesn't have the negative effects of caffeine. So you can't stand tea. Maybe drink, uh, if you're gonna drink coffee, it's gotta be organic and it's gotta be decaffeinated. Now, I'm not a big fan of coffee. We did a whole show on coffee. If you're gonna drink coffee, because I'm a realist too, I know you're not gonna do everything I say. If you're gonna drink coffee, organic, and try to do decaffeinated organic if you can. Another drink you might, might have never considered is kombucha. Years ago, this was never popular. I used to make it back in college. Um, and it, it, all you do is take your favorite tea and you put something called a, a SCOBY. It looks like a giant mushroom. It's like a slimy mushroom. And it, it ferments in the tea and creates this fizzy soda type drink. Uh, you want something fizzy? Drink kombucha instead. It's known as the immortal health elixir by the Chinese. It's bursting with gut healthy probiotics. Now, if you buy the commercial kombucha, 
it's been pasteurized. So a lot of the good bacteria are boiled out because when they fer ferment kombucha, it creates an alcohol. And so you're not supposed to sell alcohol uh, or drink alcohol, and so they, ferment, they boil it out and it kills a good bacteria. If you make your own, which is really easy to do, uh, it might be an option. But even if you're drinking the commercial ones, it's a fizzy drink, it's a good substitute for soda as well. So water, teas, sodas, stevia, lemon juice, there's so many options out there you don't have to drink aside from soda. And if you have to drink soda, there are stevia and Lohan sweetened sodas as well. When I say Lohan, L-O-H-A-N, that's how it's spelled. Another study published in January 2013 in the issue of Journal, uh, journal Appetite was done by a Brazilian research team uh, with the uh, uh, Faculty of Medicine at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, uh, Rio Grande, I'm sorry. Uh, rats were fed plain yogurt sweetened with either aspartame, saccharin, or sugar, plus their regular rat chow diet, what rats usually eat, for 12 weeks. Results showed that addition to either saccharin or aspartame to the yogurt resulted in weight gain compared to the addition of sucralose, sucralose is another type of sweetener. However, the total caloric intake was similar among the group. So they ate the same amount, but if they used two of the sweeteners, saccharin and aspartame, they gained weight. So the researchers wrote that the reason for similar caloric uh, consumption between the groups was due to increased chow consumptions among rats given the artificial sweetened yogurt. So this type of uh, co uh, compensation was, has been found in previous studies before. So they just ate more is what it boils down to. They tried to keep the calories the same, but what happened was when you did the artificial sweetener, it actually caused them to gain weight. This indicates when your body's hit a sweet taste without the calories to go through it, it adversely affects your appetite control, causing increased food cravings. So the authors concluded, greater weight gain was promoted by the use of saccharin or aspartame compared with sucralose, and this weight gain was unrelated to caloric intake. We speculate that the decrease in energy expenditure for the increase in fluid retention might have been involved. So basically, the, it, it may have held fluid into the body. Uh, so they're not exactly sure why they gained weight, but they did. 2010, scientific uh, review published at Yale Journal of Biology and Medicine discussed the neurobiology of sweet cravings and the unexpected effect of artificial sweeteners on appetite control. Once again, using the artificial sweeteners makes you more hungry in many cases. It cites several large-scale uh, uh, cohort studies, meaning similar studies, they found a positive correlation between artificial sweetener and weight gain, which flies in the face of conventional wisdom that cutting calories in order to lose weight was what you're trying to do. So for example, American Cancer Society con conducted in early 1980s, uh, including 78,000 plus women who are highly uh, similar in regard to age, ethnicity, socioeconomic class, and lack of pre-existing conditions. So they had a very similar group. And in one year follow-up, 2.7% to 7.1% more regular artificial sweetener users gained weight compared to the non-users matched at the initial weight. Once again, another study showing artificial sweeteners can cause you to gain weight. Saccharin use is also associated with eight-year weight gain. Uh, they did over 30, 31,000 women from a nurse's health study, uh, which is conducted in the 70s. It's still an ongoing study, as a matter of fact. And it's, it's pretty cool. The nurse's health study is they're taking nurses from as early as they can get them in their lives, through their lives, till when they die. And if they're looking at their lifestyle, looking at what they eat, they're looking at their uh, everything, and trying to see similar uh, findings uh, that may be correlated to diseases, one of the things they found with the nurses study is that the more dairy products you consume, the higher the rate of osteoporosis. Now, this is a long-term, very valid study. More dairy products you consume, the higher the rate of osteoporosis. If you want more information on dairy, go to our website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com, and you can go ahead and just type in dairy. We did a show on dairy. You could listen to the whole, whole show on that, not just this, but other things that I'm not a big fan of when it comes to dairy. So folks, if you have a health issue, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We want to be your doctors. You can go to our website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com, make an appointment to come see us. We accept most insurances. We try to match your insurance benefits if we can. We take Medicare. We want to help get you well and keep you well. If you don't know what to eat, you can go to our website, drjoe.com, and type in the search bar, so what can I eat? We have a whole hour we've done on breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks, parties, how to stock your pantry. It's all there. We want to be your doctors. The website's there 24 hours a day, drjoe.com. To make an appointment, you can do it right online. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on WSBRadio.com and on a WSB Radio app.